Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Quilter 101 Mini Head. Now, this has been the biggest requested uh, amplifier line for me to look at since I started my videos. I really kind of started them a year ago. June this year is pretty much one year mark for the videos. Thank you guys for the support for that. And um, over and over again, I keep hearing, you know, check out the quilters. Have you tried the quilters? What do you think of quilter? And uh, so you guys put it on my radar. And so I started looking into it. So I had to get one. So I bought one. So this is the 101 head. Now, there's a reason why I bought this. This is more streamlined for what I would use it for, so I wanna check it out. This is a two pound little 100 watt head. Now, when I say two pounds, um, I think that's because that's what they say on their website. It feels like nothing. It feels like it weighs exactly the same as like a um, tube screamer pedal, okay? So it weighs nothing, it feels like air. In fact, I don't even think anything's in it. I think it's, if I take this off, I think I'm gonna see two fairies flying around dropping uh, guitar pixie dust in there to make the sounds because I don't know what could physically be in this thing that it has no weight. Okay, the other really pleasant surprise is that it's made in the USA. I did not know that when I bought it um, and I got it and I saw the Made in USA logo. I went on their website and found out all their stuff's made in the USA in California, which is a shock. Now that's the reason why that's a shock is this was $2.99, which is really, I hate to say it, kind of an import price. So very impressive. Now, I'm not gonna say that that price is inexpensive. I'm just gonna say that that's what import price stuff goes for. So it's, imp it's impressive that they were able to do that in the US. So um, a couple things that I really enjoyed right away that I wanna point out, and I'm gonna check them out right there. So here's what it is. It's got straightforward controls. It's got gain, tri q voice, high cut, and master. Now let me explain what I love about this amp when it comes to the EQing. If you look at the tri q if you look at the first setting, which is the uh, kind of the droop, that's a mid scoop. So that's like if you took a, a you know, some kind of band EQ and scooped out the mids. Then if you go uh, look at the tri q at the top, it's flat. In other words, running your EQ flat. And then if you look all the way over to the other side of it, it's gonna be what they call like a bass drop. In other words, taking the bass down and just making it all kind of highs, which is really cool. Now it's variable, in other words, you can turn it in between that. I don't even know why you'd wanna do that. For me, it's just perfect as a three-way switch. They could've just done a three-way switch, but it's nice to have the kind of texture variants to go in between those. Why do I like that? Well, it kind of dumbs everything down, doesn't it? Just kind of set it, especially in a gig where you might just not know the amp very well. You can just kind of sweep until you find the spot. Now with the high cut, if you look at that, it does the same thing. Obviously uh, starting with a flat, then going with a slight de uh, decrease in highs, decrease in highs, and then to a super dump of highs. Now that as what's nice about that is what I've noticed with messing with it is, the high cut is reactive to the tri q Now I could be wrong, but it feels that way. In other words, depending on what stage I'm in the tri q the high cut does, it reacts more in intensely or less intensely, which is kind of cool because I don't have to worry about that as well. I find it easy to find sweet spots. Gain is gain, and the master is odd because it says zero watts, two watts, 10 watts, 25 watts, 50 watts. You know, one thing I will say is it feels when you're turning it up, it psychologically just makes you think you're like you're shooting up volume up to the stratosphere. So, okay, so back to this voice thing, this few, full, full cue, tweed, jazz, surf, and lead. So I was told um, by, by somebody that this isn't modeling, okay? So I don't know what that means then. So I don't know if it's just routing different paths in the board through different transistors to get the sound. I think that's what they're trying to imply. There's no CPU in there digitally, you know, you know with a, a program setting. Um, that being said, you can get a lot of tone. So let's, let's do a couple things that, that's interesting. It doesn't have a direct out in the back. So you can't put it into a computer and you can't DI out. This model, the model above it, uh, which is 200 watts, has the direct out. And the model above that um, has direct out and reverb, which is really cool too. But uh, they're not as light as this. And I think this is mean for a specific reason, which is it has an effects loop. So you can put you know reverb and stuff in it, but it doesn't have reverb. And it has a headphone jack. I, I think the goal of this amp is your amp blows up or you have an issue on stage and you grab this and you replace it or mount this to your pedal board and now your pedal board is your amplifier. You just need a cabinet when you get there or take a small cabinet with you. Um, I, they make a, a super light cabinet I saw on their website. So I thought that was pretty intriguing as well. Um, but I'm kind of okay on cabinets so I can't really justify buying one right now. Um, 
So anyways, what I thought was interesting was, okay, so it's a pedal platform. That's what it's sold as. That's why it has the effects loop. You put pedals in front of it. But I thought, what happens if we use it for that first intention that your amp blows? Can this give you the sounds that your other amp was doing? So I made a montage, we're gonna check it out right now, of all the genres of music I was able to perform with just using this Fender Stratocaster right here. I'm using just the bridge pickup, and in two of the songs, I'm using a the, the single coil uh, bridge and the single coil neck on another song. They'll be disclosed when you see them. This is all the sounds I could get from it with just my Strat, this box, and a speaker cabinet. Here it is. So that was cool, right? I mean, that was a lot of sounds to pull out of a, an amplifier like this uh, without the whole concept of modeling, uh, you know, right? So, uh, so let's go ahead and let's use it now what they've intended for it, which is to be a pedal platform. Let's run some pedals. So in this first clip, um, what we'll do is we'll do uh, this Fender Strat through a Ibanez Tube Screamer TS9, because I know you guys will be familiar with what that's supposed to sound like, through the MXR reverb pedal, just into this, into a cabinet, and this is what this sounds like. Now I want to show you how diverse this thing can really be. Let's do the Sewer Riot pedal through the MXR Reverb with my Gibson Les Paul and that will give us kind of more of that traditional sound. Mostly probably what we'll be using it for if you're using this for the stuff gig, you're going to be using it for rock or blues. So let's give that a try. Now this next one, what we want to do is step it up a notch. I'm going to use my MXR 5150 pedal through my favorite delay, which is the uh, Taurus Pedals Acid Reflux delay, my Nuno Bentoncourt N4 with a JB and a 78 pickup in it, and uh, let's see what kind of, kind of hard rock metal sounds we can get out of it. So it's possible at a gig that basically the bass player's amp can go out and it's just an amplifier. You can run anything through it. So I'm gonna run my Stuham Urge bass through it into a 110 bass cabinet to see will it pull off a bass tone good enough for a gig. As you can see, it's a very impressive little amplifier. I mean, there's a lot to love about it. It's got a lot of great sounds, it's super light. 
it's relatively priced right. It's, uh, it's made in the USA. It lacks, of course, a DEI out and a, and a reverb, but those are okay. Those things are I can get over really quickly for what it's used for. The only negative I have in case quilters are watching the video is it should have really came with a gig bag. I know in the, in the uh, website I saw that it says stick it in your gig bag, but I don't even have a gig bag that this fit into. <laughs> I, even my base gig bag, the pouches weren't thick enough. Now, I, under, I understand that some gig bags are, Mine weren't, and I have a lot of them. So um, having a gig bag uh, with this would have been really nice to carry it around um, since although it is very light and easy to carry around, I know it's just gonna get scratched up over time and I would really like to keep it nice and new. So something for them to pay attention to hopefully uh, in their future of, of making their amplifiers. All right, guys, as always, if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, go ahead and hit the subscription button down below. It lets me know that you are interested in more videos and motivates me to make them. If you like the videos, hit like button. If you don't like them, hit the dislike button. And as always, thank you for your time and know your gear. Oh, you're back already. Oh, um, yeah, hey. Um, well, since you're back, let's talk about something else that's cool. Um, a lot of you guys asked about these cool t-shirts, and so we did some campaigns. We're gonna do another one. Check the link below to get your own shirt. They ship internationally, which is really cool. The shipping is very, very reasonable, and um, it's a great way to support the channel. We take the proceeds of the shirts, and I put it into the channel. In other words, in improving the quality of what you see or getting other gear uh, for review. So it's just a nice way to help the channel out and have a cool shirt. So. Please support the channel and uh, check out the uh, Know Your Gear t-shirts.